This week we're going to talk about motorhome improvements. We bought a motorhome about a year ago and we've been slowly updating it to our tastes. Some of these are useful tips, some of them might not be. Headlining plastics can be awkward. We sprayed our headlining plastics with a plastic spray that you can buy online. The top tips are to make sure that you mask off as much as possible, put some plastic sheets over everything and anything you can remove before spraying it, remove it and spray it. It lightens the cab and changes the whole feel of the roof of the van. Upholstery can date a van very easily. Now our van had already been recovered once, but we wanted to lighten it and make it a bit fresher. We don't have a large roof light in our motorhome, so light is an issue, and this was a consideration when choosing the colour. Now I'm very lucky my wife is a very good seamstress, but it is essentially just making a large cushion, so you'll be able to find somebody locally that can help. Remove all of the cushions, remove all of the sideboards, headboards, foamed boards, and then you're ready to go. Take all the fabric to bits and you'll have patterns. Hand this to your seamstress and they can sew it back up again. This sounds like an overwhelming, daunting task, I'm sure. But if you look at the final finish and you consider how much of your van is covered by this fabric, it's well worth thinking about doing it. We spent a lot of time online looking at examples of new vans to see what sort of fashions and what sort of colours would take the age off of our van. Now, one thing to remember is use upholstery fabric. I know it sounds obvious, but I'm one for a bargain, and if I can save money somewhere, I will. This is not the place to do that. Your great big bomb's going to be sat on this thing for many, many miles. So don't save and scrimp on the fabric. Use decent fabric in the first place, and you'll only have to do the job once. I was quite happy with the kitchen area in our van, but what do I know? My wife had a brilliant idea of using sticky back plastic just to lighten it up and freshen the area up a little bit cheap to buy online it's a pig to apply but that means you can have several goes at it so give yourself a chance and try and learn a new skill plenty of videos online from people who are much better at this than me front seats are not as easy to change the color of to get them done professionally i got quotes of about 500 pound a seat this was a bit out of our price range and we didn't really want to put that much money into the van at this stage so buying some decent seat covers online seem to be a solution and then fit the seat covers by sewing them onto the seats instead of using the silly little clips that you get again this wasn't complicated it was just a little bit of hand sewing now everybody's got somebody in the family that can wield a needle and a thread the trick is to take the seats out of the van this is not complicated there's only normally four bolts holding them in Take the seats out it's much easier to fit the seat covers on in fact you can do it in your lounge the only thing we did extra was add a piece of black fabric because standard seat covers don't quite fit motorhome seats trying to buy motorhome seat covers it was a toss-up between motorhome seat covers or a completely new motorhome same price now just bolt your seats back into the van and there you go one of the joys of buying a used motorhome is that other people have worked on it before you, no doubt. As, bizarrely, had completely the wrong waste tank strapped underneath the van, which gave us very little ground clearance indeed. We'd scrape every sleeping policeman that we possibly could. Quick search on Google, through a company called CAK Tanks, who I've used before, showed that this was the correct tank that should be under the van, not the one that we'd got. So, remove the tank and simply fit the new one. As you can see, this increased the ground clearance massively as the tank is now tucked up where it should be. And this is where my luck ran out and the isolation valve decided to destroy itself upon refitting it. So I bought a gas isolation valve from Plumbers Merchants, which is exactly the same thing, but half the price. Now, when I went to get the vehicle, the guy that I bought it off had kindly taken it to the petrol station to fill it up. But on the way back, the battery cover had decided to rip itself off and destroy itself. So he knocked me some money off the van, which was nice of him. Now trying to get any of these covers or bumper parts of a motorhome made is very expensive. So I bought a fiberglass kit off of eBay. The next step then was to take a profile of the part that I wanted to make 
and then make a mould from that. I made the profile in cardboard initially and then in wood and then cut lots of pieces of wood of the same size, glued them all together and made myself a little mould. Now I'm lucky enough to have a brother who's quite good at this type of thing, he just happens to live on the other side of the world. Um, but there are plenty of videos online on YouTube showing you how to do this type of thing. Once the mould's made, you then line the mould with a releasing agent, which enables you to get the cover out when you've done it. Then you paint the inside of the mould with the gel coat and add your fibreglass and then gel coat over the top of it. And then when it's all dry, if you're lucky, you can pop your part out of your mould. Now this requires a video all of its own, but I didn't take any footage when I was making it, so only pictures I'm afraid. Then you can either spray it or just polish it up and put it on. I made it the wrong colour, so I had to spray it. I may make a video if somebody else asked me to make one, but the end product looked better than the rest of the colour, so I may end up doing more on my own van. And if I do, I'll probably make a video of that. Bore you to death with it. The door catch was missing its little plastic cover, which is a pain because it snags your clothing when you go in and out. Quite common these things break, they are quite brittle. A long, long search online proved that they are A, very expensive, and B, mostly out of stock. So, Andy got a new toy in the form of a 3D printer. Now this meant learning how to use FreeCAD, which you can do online on YouTube, and learning about slicing and 3D printing, which was all very exciting. But in the end, it made a very, very good product, really cheaply, if you minus the cost of the 3D printer. If you're bored enough to watch any more of these videos, you'll see I do quite a bit of 3D printing now. Um, it's a skill worth learning, and it can save you a fortune in the long run. Now, there was nothing wrong with the table in our van. It was just very heavy, and suffering with a bad back, it makes it impossible for making a bed up. Our table here extends and it has some extra pieces in it and it weighs about three quarters of a ton. As with everything in caravans and motorhomes, the cost of freestanding tables is enormous. So I managed to find this one online for 45 quid, which I thought was reasonable, and it was a nice lightweight version. It was the right size. All I had to do was change the height of the table, which I did by doing a bit of 3D printing, you guessed it. So I designed a spacer which cut down on weight and also gave plenty of fixing points and then fitted that between the leg and the bottom of the table. And that brought the table up to the normal height, swapped the fixing brackets and the legs and everything over from the old table. And all I had to do then was cut a piece of plywood to extend from that table across. And that makes up our extra berth, occasional berth, as you can see Lottie is demonstrating here. I don't know what I'd do without my little black and white foreman to inspect everything. Now from day one the habitation door on our motorhome was stiff and it took a lot of mucking about and playing around but I eventually worked out it was the hinge, the top hinge was bent. So I looked for a new hinge. Well if you look at the price of these hinges there's no prizes for guessing whether I bought one or not. I went online and had a bit of more research and found that it's only the pin that's bent and you can replace the pin. So I bought a bunch of pins, 7mm, stainless steel, solid rod, off of Amazon, for about 18 quid. And there you go, a nice free moving door. One way you can get extra storage on your motorhome is by having a back box on the bike rack on the back. Take the bikes off first. This one I managed to make for around the £150 mark. There's a separate video for this, a link will appear at the end, click on that. But the price of these things is enormous. Fiamma wants something like £500 for theirs plus. So this is a more cost effective way of storing a few bits outside the motorhome and making the inside space a little bit nicer when you're travelling. Now the front carpet in our van is very much worse for wear as you can see here. And the simple way to replace this is to find some rubber floor matting. Measure your piece of carpet maximum dimensions, go on to Amazon, this is the rubber car matting, this size fits ours. Lay your old carpet on top of it, trace round it and cut it out. Then you have a custom fit floor mat to go in the front of the van. We prefer this to carpet, as I don't have to remember to wipe my shoes every time I get in the van. 
Well, this video is getting a bit long now, and even I'm getting bored. So I'm going to cut it off here. We have done some other bits, but maybe we'll make a part two. If some of these tips have been useful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. And we'll see you again next time.